Welcome to this lecture where we will embark on a historical journey exploring resilience through the lives of two remarkable women, Sardoana Inez de la Cruz and Pat Mora. We begin in the late 17th century with Sardoana Inez de la Cruz, a self-taught scholar and nun of the Baroque School, living in what is now Mexico. Sardoana was a woman who, despite the societal constraints of her time, demonstrated her resilience through a commitment to intellectual freedom and the pursuit of knowledge. She had a keen interest in a wide range of subjects from music to mathematics, from philosophy to poetry. Her thirst for knowledge was so intense that she chose to join a convent, which she saw as an intellectual sanctuary that provided her with the freedom to study. The first significant impact she had on her community was through her advocacy. And in a time when women were excluded from formal education, Sorwana championed women's rights to education. Her most famous work, Reply to Sor Filatea, was a daring defense of women's right to knowledge, a powerful reply to a bishop who criticized her scholarly pursuits. Sardwana's resilience and her intellectual contributions challenged societal norms, establishing a foundation for feminist thought in Latin America. From the blog site, 14 lines, here is a selection from Sardwana's 1690 reply to the bishop. Open quote. I do not study in order to write or even less to teach, which in me would be a colossal arrogance, but rather only to see if by studying I can be less ignorant. This is my answer and this is what I feel. God grace me with a gift of an immense love for the truth. Since the first light of reason dawned on me, my inclination towards letters was so intense and powerful that neither reprimands by others, of which I have had many, nor self-reflection, of which I have done not a little, uh, had been sufficient for me to stop um, pursuing this natural impulse that God put in me. Therefore, if the evil lies in verses being used by a woman, we have already seen how many women have, have used them commendably, then, what is the problem with me being one? Close quote. I say this was a brilliant question of Sordowana. Fast forward to the 21st century. We meet Pat Mora, a Latina poet, author and advocate for bilingual literacy. Like Sordowana, Mora faced barriers as a Latina writer in the United States. Mora confronted cultural stereotypes and obstacles, but her resilience propelled her work in promoting diversity in literature and reshaping conversations in educational and professional arenas. Mora's first impact on her community was through her advocacy for bilingual literacy. In 1996, she started El Dia de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros, Children's Day, Book Day, and Hell's annual celebration that emphasizes the importance of literacy for children of all linguistic and cultural backgrounds. The initiative, now sponsored by the American Library Association, has grown significantly and is celebrated across the United States, fostering a love for reading among children of diverse backgrounds. One of Mora's books, Tomas and the Library Lady, beautifully encapsulates community growth and resilience. The story is about Tomas, a young boy from a migrant family who discovers the transformative power of literacy when he meets a kind librarian. The library becomes a sanctuary for Tomas, a place where he can escape the hardships of migrant life and delve into the world of books. As he learns and grows, Tomas shares the stories he hears with his family, thereby extending the library's influence to his community. This tale of resilience showcases how libraries, as communal resources, can act as catalysts for community growth. Furthermore, the resilience shown by Tomas a young migrant boy navigating a new language and culture demonstrates how individuals can overcome personal challenges, contributing to a resilient community capable of growth, adaptation, and advancement, even in the face of adversities. Oh, and who was Tomas? In reality, he was Tomas Rivera, noted Chicano author, poet, and educator who, before his death in 1984, served as the Chancellor of the University of California at Riverside, and he was widely recognized for his works that highlighted the life experiences of migrant workers in the marginalized United States. 
These two women, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz and Pat Mora, separated by centuries, have shown the transformative power of resilience. They have defied norms, overcome barriers, and have made lasting impacts on their communities. Through their examples, we can see that resilience is not just about personal strength. It's about harnessing that strength to affect change, not just in one's life, but in society at large. Their lives inspire us to see adversity not as an obstacle, but as an opportunity to unearth our strength and ultimately to contribute to the communal good.